Yeah. And now, our feature presentation. But isn't that comparable to holding up Elijah Muhammad as a cult leader? You can't criticize the leader. Aren't we going back into the kind of authoritarianism that's, that has brought so much anguish in the world, Minister? Every messenger or prophet of God was authoritarian. And every messenger or prophet of God brought us the dictates of God. That's yes. dictatorship. Yes. And we can either do what God says or refuse to do it, but there is a consequence to do it, but there is a consequence for disobeying and there is a reward for obeying. Do you renounce any of the teachings of Elijah Muhammad? Not one. Not one of his teachings? You not one. You stand by everything he wrote in the message of the black man in America? Everything that he wrote. You're unapologetic? I'm unapologetic. You're still opposed to interracial marriage? I would not marry anyone outside of my race. But why? It's, it's one, one, one world, one global village. You know, you should sit down with the Jews and ask they are them. not our models. Wait, 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 we can't wait, look to wait. the Jews, our minister. Yeah, but you the do. Jews are not our models. But, yeah, but look wait. at what they have done to the world. You, you say that. You say that. Why? Why are we following their atrocities? But the Bible teaches the Jews that they should not intermarry with those that are not of them. That was under the Old Testament, the yeah. Old Covenant. Yeah, but they don't believe in the New Testament. Yeah, but we we are past <laughs> them, minister. Let's not use them as but, a landmark. But the black man is a victim of them and therefore why should you, we you're marry still trapped, them? But you're still trapped by their, by their limits, by their thinking, Minister. No. It's time you move away from, Not the, at all. from the parameters of, 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 of their I have, outdated ideology. I have a black woman and I'm very proud of that. Yes. And if you ask the average black woman in Jamaica, is she happy to see the black man run away from her and leave her without a man and go and give to the white woman what he has never given to his own woman who nurtured him and stood by him when nobody stood by him. I don't think our women are pleased with that, and I hope you're not offering that as an excuse to marry a white woman. <laughs> <laughs> I have no such intentions. Oh, you do <laughs> no, 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 no. oh, Maybe you need to move away, huh? Classic <laughs> <laughs> to me with. Minister, your own life. You spoke about uh, at National Radio some of the difficulties that you went through. Tell us about some of the, the poverty conditions that you yourself faced and what helped to sustain you during those periods. Well, first, when a person believes in any truth, that person should be willing to suffer for the sake of that truth. I was in show business. I was making at that time, 40 some years ago, between 200 to 500 dollars a week, yes. which was a lot of Monday. money at that time. Mr. Muhammad asked me to give up my music, and I was obedient, and I gave up my music, and then I went to work in factories where I made nothing near what I made as a musician. So committed you were. But in doing so, my family, we only made $45, $50 a week. I had a wife and three children. But believe it or not, we learned to manage with little. We did not try to live beyond our means. And that poverty, which really was not poverty of the spirit yes. because I always believed that if one does what God has commanded God will bring them out of a poor condition through their obedience and hard work and so today I look back at that as a training ground yes. because when a person is poor their character is tested because when you're poor, there's a tendency to be tempted yes. to steal yes. or to sell drugs yes. or to do something that is against the law and commands of God. 
And I thank God that even though we were very, very poor, we never broke the law of God. And today we can be uh, an example to others that poverty is not poverty except that is poverty of the spirit. Yes. And your faith sustained you during that those periods when you had very little to that, eat. That is correct. Yes. And what were some of the actual conditions that you that you faced? Were there periods where you didn't have anything to eat or no. I, you always I, had a little there was always food on the table. Yes. For my, my wife and my children. Yes. The Bible <laughs> says that, you know, God looks after the sparrow. He looks after all of his creatures. We are greater than they. And if our service to God is what God is pleased with, he will look after And us. you live you live quite luxuriously today. The press talks about your your lifestyle. <laughs> I, I, live, I live in a beautiful, very beautiful home, like your prime minister. But he doesn't own it. <laughs> and neither do I own the beautiful mansion in which I yes. live. It is a result of my own hard work yes. to build the community. And black should not apologize for wealth. Why we should we feel ashamed of, of it? Why should we? We should feel ashamed if it's ill-gotten. Mm -hmm. And we should feel ashamed if we make the acquisition of wealth the purpose of our life. Mm -hmm. But if we make submission to God the purpose of our life and wealth comes as a result of that, then the test is, what do you do with wealth? Yeah. Do you use wealth to build institutions that will prolong and sustain life and change the quality of life of the people. And that's exactly yeah. what Farrakhan has the, done. You've been married for 40 years, a remarkable success. 43. Well, 43. But no one knows much about your wife. She seems to be the background. Is this a relic of what some would regard as the, the backwardness of Islam? Well, uh, is the Prime Minister's wife uh, very active? Our Prime Minister is mm. present here married. Oh, you know, uh, brother, when you're in this kind of work and you have a spotlight on you and you are spoken of evilly in the papers day in and day out, I do not choose to put my wife and children in that spotlight. My wife does not choose to be in that kind of spotlight and so we uh, are as we are yeah. is that a problem no that's that's, that's great yeah. <laughs> minister a lot of people not know the difference between nation of islam and orthodox islam ask questions as to whether you have more than one wife and what you think about the the orthodox islamic practice of allowing a man more than one wife the quran says that one is better if man but knew. But there are certain social circumstances where polygamy is acceptable. Wherever you have wars that decimate the male population, rather than seeing women turn to lesbianism or prostitution or fornication or adultery, a righteous man, a man of means, would be permitted to marry more than one wife. That social condition must or should prevail in order for that to be justified. But you're presently happy with your one wife, the one yeah. wife you've had for 43 a absolutely. years. And you've spoken quite strongly against divorce. That's correct. Yeah. Minister, in the final minute, how do you see the rest of your life? You have prostate um, cancer um, No. How does that knowledge affect you, affect your work, affect your mission? How do you see the rest of your life? Well, I would say I had prostate cancer. I don't have it you don't now. Have it. By the grace of God, we have conquered it. And my life is uh, as God pleases. I will work as hard as I have been working for the resurrection of our people. And should God choose to give me long life, I'm grateful. And should my life be short, I am still grateful for the life that God has given. Great. And the 63, you're looking so great. Thank you so much for a stimulating special edition of Profile. Minister Louis Farrakhan, leader of the Nation of Islam, speaking tough on Profile.
but we expected that of him. Until next week, Ian Bourne wishing you a very pleasant and a very productive week.